Hi there, everybody. Today we're going to do inverse trig functions, part two. So this does build on what we did in class today using trig inverse trig functions. But lucky for us, today we get to use our calculator. So in example one, we're going to use a calculator to evaluate the expression in both radians and degrees. Please round to three decimal places. So tan inverse of 3.9. So remember, anytime you have an inverse trig function, you're looking for an angle. So we want to figure out what this angle is, the one who has a tangent of 3.9. Well, we get to do this in our calculators, because it says we can use a calculator. Um, we want to do both radians and degrees, so first we need to figure out uh, what mode our calculators are in. So my calculator is in degree mode, so I'm going to do degrees first. And all I have to do is type it in just like I see it. Tan inverse is second tangent of 3.9. So that gives me an angle of 75.619 degrees. 75.619 degrees. And then we have to find it in radians. So we go back to our calculator. Now to find it in radians, we just need to go back to our mode. And make sure we're then in radiant mode so our calculator can give us a radiant answer. So, I don't know if anybody's ever taught you this before, but I love the entry button. So if you hit second entry, it pulls up the last thing that you typed in your calculator. If you do it again, it pulls up what you typed in before that. So second entry... Oh, mine's not working now. Well, that'll save you some time in the future. So. Otherwise, you have to retype it in every time. So, uh, radians for the angle that has three point or a tangent of three point nine is three point or one point three two zero. After we round to three decimal places, so one point three two zero radians. And remember, we don't write radians. It's just we assume it's radians if it doesn't say degrees. So, part B, cosine inverse of point two four. That's the same. Well, it depends what you want to find first. Since my calculator is already in radian mode, I'm just going to find the radians first. So second cosine of 0.24 gives us 1.328 radians. So 1.328 radians. And then to go back to degrees, you can go to mode. Make sure you're in degree mode. And then again, you can retype it in or hit second entry. It pulls it right back up. Press enter. 76.113 degrees. All you have to do is make sure you find both. So on your own, I would like you to do letter C. Pause here and do it on your own. All right, I hope you paused and did those calculations on your own. Um, if you didn't, make sure you do try it on your own and make sure you get it right. 81.890 degrees and 1.429 radians. It's extremely important that you write your degree so we know that that is actually in degrees. All right. So solve the equation for theta. Please round to three decimal places. Now, we have to solve for theta. And if you remember, tangent always gives you an angle in either the first or the fourth quadrant, right? We have those restrictions on our inverse tangent function. So what happens when you take the inverse tangent of both sides, right? Because we have to cancel out that tangent. Our theta, our angle is going to be tan inverse of 2.4. So inverse tangent of 2.4. So your calculator will give you that. Type in inverse tangent of 2.4 and you get one oh you know what I just made another mistake so you probably got the same answer although it is wrong we have to be careful because it says our angle is between 180 degrees and 270 degrees so that means our calculators need to be in degree mode so just make sure you have your calculator in the right mode so again, we're going to do tangent inverse of 2.4. So 
Our angle is actually 67.380 degrees. At least that's what our calculator gives us, right? 67.380 degrees. But the problem says that our angle is between 180 and 270. Well, 67 is in the first quadrant, right? 67. 0 0.380 degrees. But 180 is here and 270 is here. So that means we need an angle, in the same angle or same reference angle in the third quadrant. So here's a little hint. The tangent of any angle with 67.380 as its reference angle are the same. It's like our unit circle, right? We any 45 degree reference angle, wherever that was, whether it was first, second, third, or fourth, was root two and re, uh, square root of two over two, square root of two over two. But sometimes maybe they were negative, but all the values were the same. Well, just because these angles aren't on the unit circle doesn't mean the same thing is true. So I know that the angle in the third quadrant with the same reference angle. So the same 67.380 degrees gives me that same tangent. So basically, you just have to figure out where your angle is going to go and how you're going to get there. So what I really want to know is the angle starting from my initial side ending in the third quadrant. What is that value? So we got to think about this again. If my angle were to stop... Let me see, i got to draw this in another color here. If my angle were to stop here, I'd be at 180. Right? We know, oops, that that straight line is 180. But then we have to keep going an additional 67.38 degrees. So to find this angle, you need to do 180 plus 67.380 degrees. That'll give you the angle we're looking for, an angle between 180 and 270 with a reference angle of 67.38 degrees. So your final answer is that theta equals 247.380 degrees. Whew. Did you understand that? If you didn't, make sure you rewind right now and try that problem again. Hopefully after the next few problems you'll start to get where I'm coming from. So in part B, I have sine of theta equals 0.8 degrees. So I need that angle. So theta equals sine inverse of 0.8 degrees. Right, that's how you solve every time for an angle. So what your calculator is going to give you is 53.130 degrees. And 53.130 is in the first quadrant. Now, if you look carefully, we need an angle between 90 and 180. But all we know is that it has to have this same reference angle. So I know it's got to be in the third or the second quadrant, excuse me, between 90 and 180. And I know that the distance between my terminal side of my x-axis, which is the definition of a reference angle, also has to be 53.1, oh, wrong number, 1, 3 degrees away from 180, right? The reference angles in both of these angles are the same. So our angle goes where this green arrow is going. It starts at the initial side and ends at the terminal side. We have to figure out what that is. Well, if I went all the way to 180, I went too far. So I have to go back minus 53.13 degrees. So to find our angle, I have to do 180 minus 53.13 degrees, 180 degrees. So our angle is actually 126.870 degrees. All right. Again, pause, rewind, do what you need to do to make sure you understand this for class tomorrow. So I'm going to do one more problem like this. Um, this one is actually, in my opinion, the most challenging, but really 
you're all super smart, so you'll get it. So we first need our angle. We need theta. I have cosine, so I'm going to do cos cosine inverse of negative 0.72. So then you'll type that into your calculator, you get that your angle that your calculator gives you is 136.054 degrees, but it's supposed to be between 180 and 270, and this angle is not. 136 is in the second quadrant. That is not between 180 and 270. So the first thing you need to do is figure out the reference angle. So far, the reference angle was given to us because the angle we got was in the first quadrant. But in this case, 136 is not in the first quadrant. So we have to figure out the distance between 136.054 and 180. So 180, well that's a weird 8, 180 minus 136.054, your reference angle is 43.946. Again, you'll just do that in your calculator. So I know that this angle is 43.946. But I still need to find the angle between 180 and 270. So all I know is that it's got to be in the third quadrant. And that it has to have the exact same reference angle. That's the whole point of this lesson, right? Everything has to have the same reference angle. So I know that this angle is 43.946 degrees past 180. And I need to figure out the angle to that red terminal side, starting at the same initial side. So my red arrow goes to 180, plus it goes a little bit more, and it actually goes another 43, about 43 degrees. So to find our angle that we are looking for, we have to do 180 plus 43.946, because that will get us all the way to that angle. So our answer is 223.946 degrees. All right. So Again, that's the most challenging on this note sheet. Um, I'm going to trust that you do letter D on your own so you can try it and see how you do and come prepared to either answer or ask any questions in class tomorrow. I'm also going to skip number three and I'm going to start you off on number four. So turn your note sheet over and we'll get ready for this problem. So we have a cone, we have granular substances settle in cone-shaped piles. The angle, theta, is called the angle of repose. So this says a 10-inch high pile of sand in a sandbox has a diameter of 35 inches. So if you mark on your paper what this means, we have a height of 10 and the diameter is 35. What's cool about this is that we can really make two triangles, but we really just need one, right? We're looking for our angle theta, and if my diameter, let me draw this over here, if I know my height is 10 and my diameter is 35, that makes this one portion just 17.5, and our angle is in the corner. So now I have to solve for theta. I have to figure out what trig function I get to use with these two sides given and to find this angle. And we really can ignore the one side of the triangle. Maybe that will make it easier. So we have to think about what sides we have. I see an opposite and adjacent because the hypotenuse here doesn't have a value. So if you remember Sokotoa, which hopefully you all do, opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I know I need to do tangent of my angle is 10 over 17.5 because 10 is opposite and 17.5 is adjacent. What I would like you to do is solve for theta. I think you all know how to do that. And do your best to answer part B. When we get to class tomorrow, we'll talk about any questions that you have from any of the problems I did for you as well as go over these problems. See you then.